Let's talk about centimorgans. Named in honor of geneticist Thomas Hunt Morgan, the centimorgan is a measure of the frequency of genetic recombination between two positions on a chromosome. You may also hear a centimorgan referred to as a map unit. The two terms are synonymous. Meiosis is the process that creates gametes, which are sperm and eggs. In meiosis, recombination can occur between two homologous chromosomes. A recombination event allows the homologous chromosomes to swap portions. When this happens, the final gametes produced have different allele combinations on their chromosomes than you see in the original parent. So, if recombination does not happen, your gametes have chromosomes that look exactly like the parental chromosomes, with the linked genes traveling together. If recombination occurs between two genes during meiosis, the gametes created in meiosis will contain a different mix of alleles on the inherited chromosomes when compared to the original parent chromosomes. One centimorgan is equal to a 1% chance that recombination will separate two elements on a chromosome. The greater the number of centimorgans between two positions on a chromosome, the greater the chance of recombination occurring between those positions. For example, if two genes are 40 centimorgans apart, we would expect recombination to occur between those two genes 40% of the time in meiosis. So let's say we have this parent genome containing one chromosome that contains the dominant alleles for genes A and B, and a homologous chromosome containing the recessive alleles for genes A and B. If recombination does not occur, the gametes produced in meiosis will either look like this or like this. If recombination does occur, then you will see gametes that look like this and like this. Now, if these genes are 40 centimorgans apart, then we'd expect recombination to occur 40% of the time, and therefore, 40% of your gametes produced will look like this, while the remaining 60% of your gametes will look like this. You can break this down further knowing that each of these will be produced in equal parts. So each non-recombinant will be produced 30% of the time, and each recombinant gamete will be produced 20% of the time. Knowing the centimorgans between two genes can help you predict the offspring genotype proportions as you can predict the total percentage of each type of gamete a parent will produce. You might think that a centimorgan is a unit of distance on a chromosome. And the greater the distance between two positions, the more likely recombination will occur between those two positions. This is not wholly true. While one centimorgan corresponds to roughly one million base pairs in humans, the relationship is not set in stone, and the physical distance of a centimorgan varies from one location to the next on a genome. The best way to think of a centimorgan is as a measure of frequency of recombination rather than a physical distance, realizing that, in general, the greater the distance between two positions, the more likely recombination will take place. There you have it. That's all you need to know about centimorgans. If you'd like to learn how to determine the number of centimorgans between two genes, check out my video on the two-point test cross.